Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We are in P5JS and today I want to talk about the erase function which allows you to do stuff like this and this swoosh and this arch, this thing. Uh, this is the same thing but with some texture added to it and this. So erase opens up some interesting drawing possibilities. All the code I'm going to talk about today will be available. There'll be a link in the video description. Let's start by just looking at a circle. We create a canvas. I'll have no stroke. We fill with a color. We make a circle. Great. Now I want to make a crescent out of this circle. So I'm going to use the erase function, which looks like this. And everything that happens after the erase function will erase. So I'm going to make another circle slightly offset. And there we go. We're done, right? We can end the video now. Not so fast. Uh, let's try to add a background. So we put a background in, and now we see that we have a problem. The erase function erases the background. We don't want that. So what are we going to do? We have to put our crescent onto an invisible canvas, and then put that invisible canvas onto our regular canvas. So we'll stop that, and we're going to create graphics. We're going to create an invisible canvas, then it's going to be called CNV. Now our crescent is going to be on that invisible canvas, which means that we have to put CNV dot in front of everything that's going to be on that canvas. So I've done that, but now we need to put our invisible canvas onto our regular canvas. So we do that with the image function, image CNV, and we put it at the top left. Uh, in this case, I'm making my invisible canvas the same size as my regular canvas. So I'll hit start, and there we go. We've got our crescent onto our canvas, and it includes a background. Another thing we can do is we can have a rectangle showing behind the crescent, like this. My rectangle is on my regular canvas. If I had tried to do this on the invisible canvas, uh, the rectangle wouldn't show this part of the rectangle would wind up being erased. If you're done erasing things, you can call the no erase function and then you are able to draw after that. Besides a crescent, I could make a circle within a circle. Let's do a uh, circle 200 and the circle within at 200. And we get something like this, which is nice. Text will also act as a fill. So we can use text instead and then we'll get rid of our second circle and we can see that the text is erasing this circle and we can see the rectangle behind the text. Now let's check out our swoosh. The swoosh is a curve vertex. It starts up here and then goes up and then comes back down to here. And I've got this set to randomly make different curve vertexes. So far I don't have the swoosh because I haven't done the erase. To make the swoosh, I'm going to draw a second curve vertex underneath the first curve vertex. If I were to just do that without the erase function and make it a different color, it would look like this. But if I use the erase function, we'll bring that in, then we get this. And that's all it is for making the swoosh. Now, I haven't uh, worried about this being on a separate canvas. So if I were to add a background color, then I'm going to have a problem. So just like my previous example, if I wanted to have a background, I would have to do all of this on an invisible canvas. Here's the arch. The arch is the same as the swoosh, really, except that the second curve vertex is a little shorter than the first curve vertex. So if I get rid of the second curve vertex, you can see it's the same as the other curve vertex I was showing you. If I take out the erase and add a fill, you can see the second curve vertex. Um, I've also moved it a little farther down, which I didn't really need to do, but I did. We'll put the erase back in. Again, this is not going to work. If I add a background, you'll see this. So if you want to have an arch on your picture with a background, then you're going to have to use a Create Canvas. Now we're going to get a little more advanced with this example. Uh, first off, I've got two canvases, and instead of just making canvas one and canvas two, I've decided to make these canvases part of an array. You can make an array of canvases. Did you know that? That's pretty cool. 
So this is canvas number one in the array and canvas number two in the array. So what this is is a circle that has been rotated and then a series of rectangles erasing part of the circle. And then I do the same thing with a second circle, uh, rotating it and erasing part of the circle with a series of rectangles. I just commented out a whole bunch of the code uh, to make this simpler. So we're going to start by creating a canvas number two. We're going to push, we'll translate to the center of the canvas, we'll rotate that canvas, we'll translate back to the top left corner, uh, which I'm not sure if I needed to do or not, but I did. We're going to fill with a color and then we're going to draw a circle. So that's all we've done so far and I'm also uh, placing that canvas uh, onto the regular canvas at the end. Now we're going to call the erase function and then I'm going to make a second circle a little bit smaller in the center of that circle. So we're erasing that circle. Next I'm going to be drawing that series of rectangles. I'm going to want rect mode center on to make it easier on myself. Now I'm going to draw that series of rectangles using a for loop. So we'll uncomment this out. So it's starting at the top. I don't know if this is the top or if this is the top, but it starts at the top. It draws a, a long rectangle. It moves down a little bit, draws another wrong, long rectangle, and so forth until it gets to the end. So that's the first one. The second one is pretty much the same thing. I created my graphics up here. I called no stroke with canvas number one. We're going to push. We're going to translate. We're going to rotate. We'll translate back. Let's uncomment all that. So far, nothing's happening. Let's go ahead and put this canvas in. We're going to do fill, rect mode, and circle. Let's bring those in. Now we've got our circle. Now we're going to call the erase function and draw a series of rectangles that are going to erase part of this circle. So we erase, we call a series of rectangles, and there we go. Now I've got this randomized for different size circles, different uh, rotations, so if I hit start, you'll see different iterations of this design. Now, I want to have some texture on this. If you can see this, I'll zoom in, uh, you can see that this has some texture on it. So I've got my paper texture function in here already. Now if I just call the paper texture function, I'm going to get this, which is no good. I need to use the clip function in order for the texture to remain inside that circle. So I use this, canvas.getContext2D, and the clip function, and let me uncomment those. So there's some kind of problem using the erase function after I use my paper texture function. Somehow the paper texture function is messing up my erase function. So let me switch over to this code. The solution that I came up with for adding texture using the clip function and then the erase function is to have yet another two canvases. Or if I only wanted one of these designs, then it would just be adding one more canvas. So I've created two more invisible canvases here. This part of the code, the fill and the circle, uh, to start with, is the same as it was in the previous code. Uh, then I'm doing the get context and the clip and the paper texture. But then here's where it differs. Instead of continuing with the translate, rotate, erase, etc., uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that circle with the texture on it and I'm going to place it onto yet another canvas. So I've got canvas3.image canvas2. So now I've placed the textured circle onto the new canvas and now I can do the push, the translate, the rotate, the erase and all of that on this new canvas. So now it works. I've got both the texture and the erase. Let's look at this final example. I've got the create graphics for two different canvases. What's different about this compared to the other one is that you've got two circles that are the same size. The rectangles that are going to be erasing are the same size. They're just offset from each other. Uh, the angle 
of rotation of the canvas is the same on both canvases. So I calculate my angle of rotation. I create both canvases, uh, called no stroke on both canvases. I create the circle size, and that circle size is going to be used on both canvases. So I've got canvas two, fill, circle. I push, translate to the center of the canvas, rotate, translate back to not the center of the canvas anymore. Uh, then call the erase function. I'm going to call rect mode center, then do use my for loop and draw a series of rectangles. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the next canvas and all of this code is exactly the same. The only difference is that when I'm drawing these rectangles, they're going to start in a different place. This one is starting 25 pixels down, whereas this series of rectangles is starting at zero pixels down. So with this, I'm able to get the stripes. If I were to move one of these over a little bit, then you get something like this. And if I hit start, you'll see different iterations of these two circles. If I were to change this so that they were the same and then put this to zero, you would only see one of the circles being drawn because one is covering up the other one. But I could still move this over a little bit and then you would see the other circle that has been covered up. But if I hit start, you can see different iterations of that. So I think that covers everything I wanted to go over in this video. There's certainly a lot more possibilities with the erase function. I'm just touching the surface, I think. Again, there are links to the code in the video description. If you've liked this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Uh, comments are always welcome. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.